there are hundreds of thousands if not millions of islands on Earth, most of which have been formed by natural geological processes, such as the action of volcanoes or coastal erosion. Particularly in recent decades, however, there's a brand new way that islands have begun to appear – man-made island construction. From vacation sites to nature reserves and even military installations, these are 15 amazing man-made islands. Number 15. Yas Island Located off the coast of Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates, it's almost hard to believe that the 9.7 square mile Yas Island only began being built in 2006 and has since become one of the most popular tourist attractions in the region. The idea was to turn it into a multi-purpose venue featuring leisure, shopping, and entertainment venues. But in many ways, even the original designers couldn't have imagined just how unique it would become. Believed to have cost around $40 billion to develop, it has a beachfront shoreline that's 20 miles, and it's connected to the mainland by a highway. The biggest feature on the island is the 3.5-mile Formula One racetrack that hosts the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix each year. But it's also where you'll find Ferrari World, a theme park with the world's fastest roller coaster, a huge water park, SeaWorld Abu Dhabi, and the world's tallest indoor climbing wall, with a huge indoor arena and seven luxury hotels. Attracting around 300,000 visitors each day, Yas Island is undoubtedly the most visited and lucrative man-made island in the world. Following its success, there are plans to develop it even further. You can only imagine what it'll be like 10 years from now. Number 14. Willingdon Island In 1936, construction began on a new port in Vemanand Lake in the state of Kerala, India. Huge amounts of soil were dredged from the sea area to make room for the ships to moor, and rather than simply disposing of this, the material was added to a small island that was already there, to create a new, much larger island that would become part of the city of Kochi. Originally used by the British Air Force as a new base during the Second World War, the island was handed over to the Indian military when the country became independent in 1947. In the following years, the small airport was significantly expanded, and because of the proximity to the port, further developments were undertaken that made it one of the commercial centers of the city. Today, the island is home to operations for the port, the Southern Naval Command of the Indian Navy, various institutions, hotels, schools, and headquarters of international companies, which has now led it to becoming an extremely important hub for international trade. Number 13. Dial al Muharraq Covering an area of 4.6 miles, Dial al Muharraq is a man made archipelago made up of seven individual islands that's in the Persian Gulf off the coast of Bahrain. Just six and a half miles from the country's capital city, Manama, the archipelago has been designed to function as a city in its own right and was named after a nearby naturally formed island called Muharraq. With limited desirable space available in the country, the idea of development was born of both providing for the needs of the Bahraini people and to further establish it as a leading world destination. Construction work began in 2007, and while the entire project hasn't yet been completed, the islands welcomed their first residents and businesses in 2015. Made with reclaimed land, the island will eventually have 25 miles of waterfront with sandy beaches and buildings, which range from villas and residential towers to hotels, entertainment venues, and commercial spaces, and incorporate modern and traditional Arabic designs. It's a joint venture between Bahrain's four main banks and the government, and while most of the units are targeted at wealthy owners, there's been an emphasis on social housing provision too, to ensure everyone can benefit from the huge investment. Number 12. Donauinsel With changing climatic conditions and the need to protect long-established communities, countries around the world are investing in various ideas to hold back the forces of nature. In Vienna, Austria, there have been rising fears of flooding throughout the city for more than a century, and the first works to try to control the flow of the river Danube, which passes through the city, were carried out in the 1870s. These worked to an extent, but a century later, city officials had to come up with a more radical plan. In 1972, work began on the construction of a channel in the riverbed to increase the volume of water that can pass through it, and at the same time, the material that was removed was used to form a man-made island that would provide a physical barrier. The result was a piece of land that's now known as Donauinsel, which is 13.1 miles long and just 689 feet at its widest point. While the main purpose of the island's construction was for flood defense, it's since been converted into a recreation and entertainment venue. The strip of water between the island and the riverbank is now a popular swimming lake, while the island itself is packed full of bars, restaurants, and nightclubs. 
With its own beach and area set aside for sporting pursuits like rollerblading, cycling, and canoeing, it's also home to the annual Donal in Salfest, a free open-air music festival that welcomes more than 3 million visitors. Number 11. Fiery Cross Reef the ominously named Fiery Cross Reef has become arguably the most controversial artificial island in the world and shows the lengths that some world powers will go to establish their dominance in a region. It was originally a small reef in the South China Sea that took its name from a British ship that wrecked there in 1860. In the following century, however, it was seen by China as the perfect place to establish a military base and therefore claim ownership of a larger region of the South China Sea so forces took control of it in 1988. This sparked a dispute within Vietnam, with a skirmish taking place on a nearby reef in March of that year, but ultimately China retained control of Fiery Cross Reef. In 2014, international observers noticed a heightened level of activity taking place on the reef, and it became clear that reclamation work had begun to turn it into an island. Now covering an area of around 677 acres, a full air base along with a 1.9 mile long runway has been built, as well as a series of hardened shelters for mobile missile launchers and an early warning radar site. From its beginning as nothing more than a reef like many others around the world, Fiery Cross has now become one of the most important strategic sites in the region. Number 10. Hulumale the Republic of Maldives, which is in the Indian Ocean off the southwestern coast of India, is a country that's made up of a series of 26 atolls and several other small islands, and along with its population of just over half a million people, is one of the most popular tourist destinations around the world for people wanting to sit back and relax on its stunning shorelines. With all the development that's taken place, space is now at a premium, and in 2004 a new island was inaugurated by the then president, which had been artificially made by dredging sand from the seafloor. Known as Huljumale, it covers an area of one and a half square miles and is the fourth largest island in the whole country. Already home to more than 50,000 people, the longer term plan is that as many as 250,000 will live there within a decade, all of whom will have access to facilities like schools, hospital, mosques, and commercial areas, as well as a newly built road network to give access to the nearby island of Huljule where the country's main airport is. Hulhumale shows how inventive island nations have to be to continue expanding, and with concerns about rising sea levels, it could well be the first of many that are built in the Maldives. Number 9. Marker Wadden In 2012, an effort to counter the effects of human development on local animal and plant species, a Dutch nature conservation organization called Vereniging Natuurmonumente proposed an idea to create a man-made archipelago in the Markermeer Lake in central Netherlands. They soon had the support of politicians and nearby communities, and construction began on the first phase in 2016, with the first island of the project being completed just a month later. Work immediately moved on to the construction of another four islands, with the intent that they would help improve the water quality of the lake, as well as creating a longer coastline and, most importantly, breeding grounds throughout. The project has created a similar environment to the one in the nearby Wadden Sea, although without tidal forces, and has already been colonized by a large number of different bird species, including 200 breeding paired of avocet waders, common terns, little terns, spoonbills, northern shovelers, and many more. While the initial investment of 19 million euros was provided by the Dutch government, the islands will welcome a limited number of tourists to generate the funds needed for maintenance. The fact that they've proven to be such a success already, however, means that it's likely further projects like this will move forwards in the Netherlands and elsewhere in the world as a way to undo some of the harm that's been done to the environment. Number 8. North Star Island Oil has been, for more than a century, one of the most valuable and vital commodities in the world which has led to drilling companies going to extreme lengths to find new sources. Between 26 and 37 percent of the annual oil production around the world comes from offshore sites, and while recent advances means it's now easier than ever to scour the seabed for deposits, it used to be a lot more difficult, particularly in regions where a traditional oil drilling platform can't be used. Around 12 miles to the northwest of Prudhoe Bay in Alaska, you can find one of the most extreme examples of this. In the 1980s, Royal Dutch Shell found evidence that there was a vast oil field at a depth of around 12,500 feet beneath the surface of the Beaufort Sea. But because of the ice that forms there each year, a floating platform couldn't be used. Instead, they developed a small artificial island to further explore the field, and by the early 2000s, North Star Island had been built to fully support the drilling effort. 
now covering an area of five acres and made from a material that was delivered by a barge during the summer and by truck over an ice road in winter, the only permanent connection to the mainland is via three underwater pipes. Costing an estimated $686 million to complete, production was finally able to begin in October of 2001, and it has since been able to extract as much as 70,000 barrels of oil per day. Number 7. The Pearl, Qatar the Pearl in Qatar is an artificial island development that's offshore from the West Bay Lagoon area of the country's capital, Doha. It was first announced in 2004, and while it's still fully not complete, it's already home to around 50,000 people and a wide variety of hotels and businesses. Planned to create 20 miles of new coastline, Venice was undoubtedly an inspiration for the Pearl, where one of the districts, called the Kanat Quarter, is connected by a series of canals and features pedestrian-only squares, plazas, and 15 bridges. Other districts will have varying themes too, but this is much more than a residential island. The Pearl will be made up of at least 13 different islands, which will be used for commercial premises like restaurants, entertainment venues, hotels, retail centers, and virtually anything any corporation wants to pay to build there. With an initial budget of $2.5 billion, the project has already increased in cost to six times that amount. But as one of the most recognizable waterfront developments on Earth, it's surely only a matter of time before developers recoup their investment. Number 6. The Principality of Sealand During the Second World War, Britain built a series of forts in the river estuaries and further out to sea to protect shipping routes from Nazi attacks. One of these, called Ruff's Tower, was installed around seven nautical miles off the coast, which at the time was in international waters. Made of a pontoon base with two hollow towers that are connected by a main dock, it was designed so that additional structures could be placed on top if needed. It's not exactly what you think of when you'd imagine a man-made island, but its status as an island has been up for debate, particularly in recent years. Following the war, the forts were abandoned, but because of its offshore position, Ruff's Tower was taken over in 1965 by a pirate radio station. Two years later, a former army major who had ideas of launching his own radio station took control of the fort and renamed it the Principality of Sealand. He and his family that now live there part-time claim that the fort is, in fact, an island, and that because it's in international waters doesn't fall under the jurisdiction of British law. This, of course, has been contested by the British government, but it hasn't stopped some companies such as the illegal file-sharing website Pirate Bay from trying to base themselves there to exist in a legal gray area. Whether or not it's truly the world's smallest nation, it's possible to apply for a Sealand passport. It has its own coins and postage stamps, and the country's flag has even been flown at the summit of Mount Everest. Number 5. Palm Jumeirah If you've ever seen an aerial view of Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, you'll probably have seen the noticeable shape of the Palm Jumeirah on the coastline. Located in the Jumeirah region of the country, it's a man-made island that's designed to look like a palm tree reaching out into the ocean from the beachfront. Work first began in 2001 based on designs by two Dutch companies, and it was made from reclaimed land that had been excavated from other construction projects in the region. In total, it's added 320 miles to the coastline of Dubai, and it's connected to the mainland by the Middle East's first monorail that began operation in 2009. With more than 4,500 residential units and a large number of luxury hotels, resorts, and retail developments, it was hailed as one of the most exciting new projects of the century. Although in practice, it's not turned out as well as had been hoped. From above, it undoubtedly looks impressive, but the way it blocks the ocean currents means that the water around it is stagnant and the quality has deteriorated as a result, and it also gets surrounded by large swarms of jellyfish each summer. In 2020, however, with reduced human activity because of the COVID pandemic, wildlife activity around the palm noticeably increased, with large numbers of dolphins and other marine animals swimming in the waters. Number 4. Roko Island The rectangular Roko Island, which is near to the port of Kobe in Japan, was built over a period of 20 years, from 1973, to increase the land available to the city for further development. The project was a massive undertaking, which involved the removal of top layers of several wood-covered mountains to the northwest, and the construction of a 10-mile-long underground conveyor belt to transport the material to where the island was being constructed. Now covering an area of about 2.2 square miles, it has a residential area at the center, which is separated from the industrial areas by a green belt. 
While most developments on the island are to support the port industry, it's also become a popular place for international residents thanks to the presence of two international schools and also has a university, two museums, and a large amount of space dedicated to outdoor recreational activities. It has also become a destination during certain times of the year because of the festivals that are held there, such as the summer carnival and farmers markets. But the island truly comes to life in late October during the Halloween and Harvest Festival when there are parades, costume contests, and a haunted house. Number 3. The Burj Al Arab Visitors to Dubai and the United Arab Emirates have the choice of countless luxury hotels to stay in. But the one that stands out the most on the city skyline, and sometimes is said to be the world's only seven-star hotel, is the Burj Al Arab. Designed to look like the sail of a ship, it's one of the tallest hotels in the world, reaching a height of 1,053 feet. And this is all the more impressive considering it was built on an island that was created specifically for the structure. The island itself is 920 feet offshore, but to support such a large and heavy building, developers had to drive 230 concrete piles into the sand, each of which is 130 feet long. These were surrounded by a layer of large rocks and boulders that were arranged in a honeycomb pattern and concrete and steel was added to this to give the stable foundation. Featuring six restaurants, one of which has its own huge seawater aquarium, the hotel is also a helipad on one of the upper floors, a large 18-story atrium and 208 suites. And with the price for the royal suite being around $24,000 per night, however, this is a place that only the wealthy can afford to stay, so the rest of us have no choice but to look at it from a distance. Number 2. Ocean Flower Island at a cost of $24 billion, Ocean Flower Island is a new development that has just been completed off the coast of Danzhou in Hainan, China, and is made up of three individual islands, covering a combined area of 940 acres. The plan is for it to become the premier destination in the region, and the team behind the project expects it to attract as many as 10 million visitors each year. Boasting the presence of 200 internationally renowned brands along with 12 Michelin-starred restaurants, luxury homes and hotels, and 25 miles of new coastline, there's so much to do on the island that there'll be little reason to venture from it into the city. It has its own opera house, a huge marine world with a water park, 28 museums and amphitheater, a number of themed entertainment centers, and the world's largest conference center. Built by the Evergrande Group, which is one of the largest property developers in China, it's seen as a proof of concept in how to expand provisions for tourists and corporate guests without redeveloping or displacing communities that are already present. If it's seen as a success, there could be many more islands like this built in the coming decades. Number 1. Flevopolder when you first see images of Flevopolder in the Netherlands, it's hard to believe it's an island, let alone one that was man-made. But after being created between 1955 and 1968, it remains the largest artificial island in the world, covering an area of 370 square miles. At the time, it was a highly controversial project because of the concern of altering the natural geography of the region forever. But the economic advantages that it brought are generally considered to have considerably outweighed the cost. Unlike most other artificial islands that are created by reclaiming land or dredging sand from the seabed and placing it on foundations that have been built in open water, the process behind Flefopolder was different. Instead, a series of embankments and seawalls were built around where the island was going to be, and then a diesel and electric pump were used to drain the water. It's therefore completely reliant on the walls to hold the surrounding waters back, but it's now been there for so long it's indistinguishable from the mainland that's mainly used for farmland. There are three main settlements on the island, which have a combined population of around 317,000 people, and due to the number that live there, along with the sheer size of the island, it forms the bulk of the province of Flevoland, which is the most recent province to be incorporated into the Netherlands in 1986. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.